let's create our database for the project. So uh, hit this home icon over here and then navigate to user accounts. Uh, here are some default users. By the way, you may notice that we logged in to this admin panel without uh, any login, no password. This is specific for XAMPP. Usually when you go to production, when you go to the real server, you will have to provide an admin um, username and password. So when you install a database, it will ask you for this master admin password. Um, however, for the local uh, development, it's not required for the sake of um, you know use and ease of use actually. Let's create a new user for our project because obviously we don't want, we could use this admin password. There's a root username without password, which has access to all the databases, but let's do it in the proper way. So for different projects, you want to have different databases and different users. So we're gonna create, hit this add user account and let's give it a name CMS. Oh, I again, mistype it, uh, CMS and for the host, let's do the local host. So we want this uh, user to have access to the local host. Uh, for the password, I'm going to type secret. And you can type whatever you want here. Just make sure that you remember this and repeat it here. Now what we're going to do, we're going to click these two checkboxes here, which going to create the database with the same name CMS for us. Otherwise, we would have to separately create username and database and then give all the access to the user. Here we can do it just with these two checkboxes, which you can see over here. So we have this create database with the same uh, user, uh, with the same name and grant all the privileges on the wildcard name. We're also gonna uh, give this user uh, global privileges to different databases just for the sake of ease, but that's not uh, important and not required. However, uh, let me just show you this on the left side. Uh, to make sure you see everything. And this is basically the uh, setup which we're going to use. So we have the new username and we don't have database yet, but once we click on this go button over here, we're going to see A, the SQL statement which was used to generate this um, database and query and everything. And then we can see that our database has been created here. So it's empty now, we don't have table. So let's create tables now. Let's start with our users table and we're going to need briefly six uh, columns over there. So let's create this one. Uh, first, it's going to be ID. So uh, we want to have this auto incremented, right? So there's going to be uh, every time we're going to add the new record is going to automatically give it an ID. We're not going to care about it. Um, and this should be 10 long. Um, and then what we else need here is primary new AI attributes. Okay, so we're gonna do unsigned, uh, which means that it's gonna take values from zero. Uh, it cannot get the negative numbers. Basically, when you choose int, it will store a value from some range minus a couple of thousands plus a couple of tens of thousands, uh, which you can use, but for the ID, we don't want to use actually the um, negative values. Uh, therefore, we will just shift this window from minus, let's say, minus 5 to plus 5 to 0 to 10, right? So it, we're going to have the same range, but since we are not using the negative numbers, we're going to get more uh, positive numbers on the side. What we also need is username, so we would know how to um, actually call our user, right? Um, so for this, I'm going to use uh, Varkar and it should be 100 long. There are a few more options here where we can, uh, which we can use. Uh, coding, if you have specific one, you can use this one. Uh, otherwise, it's going to use the default one, uh, which is UTF-8 MB4. Um, general CI uh, for the database. Uh, if you if you need to use some specific uh, coding for your project uh, because you want to support specific languages, then you should change it. Otherwise, just leave it empty. Um, attributes. So, like we discussed, binary and signed. We know we don't need any of this. Null. Uh, this will tell a database whether we want to have this value nullable or not. So we can specifically set the null value. It's required in some of the projects in our, we don't actually gonna need it. And there are a few more options which we're gonna use here. So let's just jump to the next one. Um, so we're gonna have an email and actually we're gonna use our email as our login to our application. You can use your username as well. Doesn't really matter. I prefer to use email because this is actually 
a unique one. So let's go to Varkar and let's go to 100. And probably no one should have the longer email than 100 characters. Um, and then let's move to the next one, which is password. And this is also Varkar for the password. Let's do 100. Uh, so the next one will be active. Uh, so we will be able to change user from active to uh, inactive. So the inactive user cannot log into our system. For that, we're going to use um, a Boolean. Uh, MySQL doesn't really have the real Boolean. It's just making a very tiny integer. So very small field, which either accepts zero as a false or one as true. And finally, uh, we want to do uh, added. And this is going to be a date time. And uh, this is going to be a date time. And this will accept as a default value, it will accept the current timestamp. We can also uh, choose, for example, to here to set certain value um, to our fields. So whenever we create um, a new record into our database, uh, into this table, specific table, we can set the default values if they were not provided by users. So for example, we could make uh, sure that all the users by default are um, inactive or some other use cases, uh, whatever we want, uh, but we're not gonna um, actually uh, set anything other than the, the timestamp. So this will uh, make sure that our database will take care of keeping track of the timestamps where when given users were added. Now let's uh, click um, save. We can also preview SQL so we would see what kind of SQL would be um, executed before we're actually going to run it. And we can also use it because sometimes, for example, you might want to use certain SQL uh, statements in your application. So um, imagine that you want to move this application to your different computer what you can do uh, you can actually run this query from your php and this will create all the tables on the new computer or on the new database actually to be to be very specific uh, so you don't have to go and do the same process again on the new computer slash database now let's hit the save button over here and this will create our table uh, for us now let's do one more thing because we want to make sure uh, as long as our username depending whether we treat it as a, some kind of a name or actually the username um but you want to be this unique because i'm going to use email here i want to make sure that um, uh, my email is unique so i'm just going to click on that and i'm going to add this unique option here so that uh, will make sure that the database will actually take care of making sure that every single uh, email is uh, unique so if there will be new user trying to register with the same email which has been already used it's not going to let it do it um if you want, you can also do it for username. I'm going to keep it like this. I'm going to keep it simple because I'm going to be using username more of like a, a name. So there might be a couple of usernames with the same name, like, you know, David. However, each of these Davids will have different email address. Okay, so now let's create uh, another table for our post. I'm going to click here, news. Um, new and uh, as you can see now it didn't ask me about the tables uh, or actually the column number so it gave me four but we can add more if we need so it's going to be posts and then i'm going to have id uh, integer 10 and i'm going to do a uh, auto increment here by the way you can notice that if you choose auto increment uh, it will automatically use this as a primary key uh, what we need here is a title then we're going to have a content and we will also need the author. Uh, actually, we don't need it, but I'm gonna add it. So basically, we're gonna store the information on which user uh, added this um, this content, this article, this post. Um, this ain't no necessary uh, if you have only one user, obviously. Okay, so for the title, we're gonna have Varkar, and let's say that we're not gonna have longer than 200. For the content, we're gonna use text because there might be a lot of content coming uh, into it. For the author, I'm gonna keep it simple. It's int because our ID in the previous table users was also the uh, number. So we also just gonna keep it as a reference uh, for the ID. We could do the foreign key here. Um, so 
basically we could uh, make sure that these both are um, connected, but I'm not going to go into that in this tutorial because we have another series on SQL itself and on the, how to use this database and what's the foreign key, what the primary keys. I don't want to make it complex for you, especially if you're just starting with it and you're doing this for the very first time. So let's keep it simple. I'm basically uh, just, just keep in mind that we will store here the ID uh, from the previous table. So if I'm going to create the very first user which uh, with ID number one, so I've put here number one, which means that this first user is the author of this uh, of this um, uh, post. Um, okay, and we need a couple more because uh, I want to add two more. Uh, and we're going to use them for date. So one is going to be date and the other one is going to be added. Now this one will take the uh, date uh, type and this one will be the date time. So the, the last one you already know. So default value we just set the current timestamp. So I want to know when this was actually initially uh, created. Now, however, now when it comes to date, I want this um, to be set up by user. So you know sometimes you want to create a post, uh, but after a couple of weeks, months, days, you want to update it, and then you want to change it. You want to refresh it, right? So we want to actually keep track of kind of above. So first is actually when it was created and it's stored in database automatically, and the second will let user to update it. So it's kind of a like I, I would call it the last update date. Uh, so we're gonna give this um, this possibility to our user. Okay, so this is it and let's just save it so now we have both tables ready so let's jump into the code where we're going to learn how to connect our from our code from our php to our database so we could read and add data into it